Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about episode 8 and 9 of Star Wars The Bad Batch. Um, if you're only here for this week's episode, which is episode 9, I'll put a timestamp uh, in the description and you can just skip to that part if that's where you want to be. So the episode starts with Admiral Rampart and Lama Su um, discussing the Bad Batch and, and cloning in general. Um, and Rampart wants to know everything that goes on in Kamino. He said it himself, and Lama Su kind of argues with him a little bit because he's so desperate to get Omega back. They're, they're really trying to fight for the Kaminoan survival here and their contract with the Empire. They don't want to die out because I'm pretty sure the Empire will just kill them off once they're done with them. They don't want any any rival clone armies or anything like that to try to contest them. Um, the next part of the episode is Wrecker teaching Omega how to disable a bomb and Omega fails. The, the smoke bomb detonates and um, she, she learns a lesson and, and how to actually disable a bomb from Wrecker. And this is important because it's Dave Filoni again showing us and also showing his higher ups at Disney that you know this is how you write a female character and this is how you make her likable. You have to be able to watch her fail and watch her grow and learn from those mistakes. So, good job, Dave. After that, um, Crosshair and the Empire land on Bracca, and they're there to, to kill and exterminate the Bad Batch, rid their filth from the galaxy. Hunter and Omega actually have an interaction with Crosshair, and Omega brings up the fact that he's being controlled by an inhibitor chip, and that everything that he's doing is against who he was before and he can't he can't help it and for a brief moment Crosshair kind of stops for a second so it looks like the same thing that happened with Jesse and season 7 of the Clone Wars is that sometimes if the bond is strong enough the, the chip can still be overrid a little bit which is, is really interesting and I would love to see it be overridden completely just by emotion and not you know computer workings or whatnot like I would I would love to be able to see something like that happen so that whole conversation ends in a shootout of course and the Bad Batch are on the run there, there's troops everywhere and um, anyways they get stuck in this Republic Star Destroyer thruster and they have to double back and then they hear the engine start to boot up a little bit and Crosshair is literally trying to roast them alive he's got them pinned between uh, his sniper and the, the thruster being turned on, and the Bad Batch do some Bad Batch maneuvering and blow around the, the edges. That's what she said. Or he said. They blow up the edge of the thruster and it falls down, and right as it's falling, the thruster turns on and it burns and scars Crosshair. He, he, you know, he's got a bruised eye and he's got a broken arm and a cast and all this wraps and a breathing device on his face by the end of the episode. So it really did a number on him. The Batch is trying to get back to, to the Havoc Marauder, their ship, and somebody cuts them off. And it's none other than Cad Bane himself. Hunter and Omega are staring Cad Bane down in the super, super tense western standoff style of a scene. And they go for it, and man... Does Hunter get his butt handed to him? I mean, he should have known going up against Cad Bane, but whew, ain't nothing better than a good old fashioned Western standoff. Cad Bane then stuns Omega and takes her uh, unconscious body aboard the ship to bring to the Kaminoans, the people who hired him. And that is where episode eight leaves off. Now episode nine begins with the Bad Batch in their ship and they're flying away from Bracca with, um, Crosshair and his Republic cruiser, not, not cruiser, a uh, shuttle flying behind them and they're in a bit of a dogfight. And the Bad Batch have to make a decision, like do we do we get out of here and and kind of leave Omega, you know, out there on our own for a little bit, or do we try to take Crosshair down? They decide to they decide to leave and and regather themselves before they go after Omega, but they don't know where she is. And Hunter got a little upset there. And it was, it was, it just kind of hurt the heart a little bit because I know he misses her. After that sequence, I feel like we get to the most uh, interesting part of the episode when Lama Su and the other Kaminoans are talking about the importance of Omega. And then it cuts to the Bad Batch and they're doing research on, on Omega. And it turns out that 
she is the second clone to have 100% uh, DNA transfer like Boba. She, she's 100% um, replication of Django. The Kaminoans then talk about how they're mainly interested in her blood and not her herself, which really brought me back to Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, and, and Grogu and their whole situation when he got captured because Moff Gideon was only after his blood, um, which I think is for cloning Palpatine. I want to know. I want to know. Tell me. I'm ready. I want to know. While they're on the way to the meetup spot to meet uh, Tan Wei, um, Omega and Toto 360 have a bit of an interaction on the ship, and we get to see Omega really use her intelligence here, similar to how she did with that weird monster thing in episode three that took the energy core from their ship. And she is really kind of a little manipulative. <laughs> she um, is really good at, at persuading Toto 360, which is supposed to be a logic-based droid. And that's what we've seen him as before in the Clone Wars, but she was able to outsmart him. The planet that they meet Tan Wei on actually has really similar architecture and like display screens and, and even the pod that Omega was in later in the episode looks very Kaminoan, which makes me think that it was some sort of uh, outer planetary outpost on, on a separate planet, which is something that we've never really seen before from their species, which is interesting too. Finnick then shows up on that outpost with Tan Wei's dead body. So we finally find out what happened to her and uh, she's still been on the, on the hunt for Omega and her and Cad Bane get into a bit of a shootout um, fighting over the bounty. While Finnick and Cad Bane are in their scuffle, Finnick is on the run um, going through the maze of hallways that is that outpost and she stumbles into this, this cloning room or, or something and it's got all these, these giant glass jars of uh, these weird Kaminoan experiments. There are a couple aliens in there that I didn't even recognize, but it reminded me of the cloning chambers that were on Exegol in the Rise of Skywalker with, with the, all the Snokes floating around and stuff. And I really got that vibe, which, which makes me wonder if Palpatine was able to crack the Kaminoans' cloning code. I don't know. They were both sitting in that kind of green liquid, juice, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's very interesting to me. It then cuts back to uh, Bane and Fennec's fight and it's now gone hand to hand, which we've never really um, seen them fight before. And it was, it was really cool. These are supposed to be some of the best bounty hunters at the time. And, and watching them uh, really kind of go like all out with their punches and kicks and headlocks and grapples and all that crazy stuff. I just thought it was a really cool thing to get to see. And um, anyways, so Cad Bane is kind of winning the fight and Fennec comes back in a way and gets the upper hand on Cad Bane. She's able to sabotage his ship and Omega is able to escape the outpost. The Bad Batch come and pick up Omega and Cad Bane is left empty handed. There is then a brief conversation over hologram between Finnick and Nala Se, which was the Kaminoan that kind of looked after Omega before she was taken off of Kamino by the Bad Batch. And it seems like Finnick is sort of looking like the good guy. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but I know that Nala Se is very protective of Omega because she was the one that orchestrated Tan Wei's death. The final scene of this episode is uh, the Bad Batch, they're all, they're all sleeping in their chambers aboard their ship, and Omega is kind of on her own. She's, she's kind of thinking about things and, and it seems a little bit lost. Um, and Hunter is sitting up in the cockpit just by himself looking off into space and, and probably thinking the same exact thing that she is. And Omega walks up to him and they have a really, a really sweet and tender little conversation about how Omega is scared and Hunter is, is scared too but they're always gonna have each other's back because you know they're they're clones and and that's their duty and they they love each other I, I really do think so I, f I feel like Hunter is looking at Omega like a kid of his own and and someone that he has to take care of and I, I really like that that story Beat, I guess I don't know it, it it's like that in in the Mandalorian too with with Grogu and in the relationship that they have I, I just I think it's really great 
and we don't get a lot of uh, a lot of good parenting role models in Star Wars, I guess. And when you when you really think about it, there's just not a lot there. And I like I really like those small um, emotional moments between Omega and Hunter, and I I think they add a lot of weight to the show and make it more relatable uh, as an audience member. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for my episode reviews of eight and nine. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to share this with uh, with someone who you know likes Star Wars. I'm trying to grow my channel a little bit more, and I would really like your guys' support in that. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day. May the Force be with you, always.